But mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit more. You know, um, this is getting exciting, but I want to continue to, to dig a little <laughs> bit more into the lean loss side of things. Sure. Um, can definitely see all the different ways this could help out a law firm, but specifically talking about timekeeping, invoicing, payments, you know, those are some of the really big workhorses, if you will, for mid-sized law firms. And, and a lot of law firms that we've heard from uh, struggle a bit with uh, automating these particular workflows, getting bills paid, you know, making them easier to address and handle. I, I like what you said earlier about it kind of being almost a it's separate side gig and things they do outside of their current packages. So how can QuickBooks Online Advance and Lean Law help handle these? Thanks, Matt. Um, a modern billing engine is the foundation of a modern law business. So after all, that's how you get paid. Uh, so it should not be an afterthought. It needs to be an asset that strengthens the trust and alignment between the firm and its clients, all the way from engagement to closure. Now, this is a different way of thinking about your billing, and I want to emphasize it for just a second, that we are talking about using your billing as a way to improve the trusted relationship that you have as a law firm between the, the lawyers and the firm and the clients. It's about aligning expectations about what things are going to cost and how they're how they're going to get paid. And, you know, I've, I've had struggles in my own practice with this. So I completely understand this. And at Lean Law, we really want to be focused on trying to make that as good as possible for the law firm. Um, so there are three critical aspects in this workflow. One is describing the services performed. That's timekeeping, in uh, 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 fixed fees, maybe leads billing, you know, how do you describe what you're what you're doing for your client? Second is invoicing it, and third is getting it paid. So let me share my screen, and uh, I will uh, show you some of this. Excuse me for one second, and we'll pull this up. Yeah, no worries. Take your time. We're we're excited to see it. Okay, so do you see a uh, lean law on yes. the screen now? Okay, this is, so what we're looking at here is lean laws bulk entry timekeeping page. So as you can see, there are a bunch of entries on here already. And uh, this is where a lot of, you know, if you have a lot to do in terms of timekeeping, this is where you go. And let me just back up for a second to say the secret to timekeeping is that you understand lawyers. And lawyer, if there are uh, four different choices for how you do things, lawyers are gonna want five. So uh, you have to have flexibility in your timekeeping. So this is one of the ways we found people like to input time. And sometimes it's not always the lawyers. Well, often it's not the lawyers. So somebody will have a spreadsheet that's been given to them or even notes on a pad. And so the staff member is, is uh, inputting here, and this makes it easy to do that. So if I hit create a time entry, I can pick out a client and a matter and write a description. It's, it gives me a bunch of automated choices based on things that have been put in, or you can just type it in. If you need notes, you can do that. Is it billable? And then you put in the amount of time. Let's make this one an hour. And you create an entry. In a few seconds, that's done. And you, you, know, you may have dozens of those to put in. If you're doing this right, you should be inputting your time as you go, because otherwise you're going to forget a lot of it. And we want to make sure there are easier, easy ways to do that. Um, so that's one way to keep time on Lean Law. The other, another way is uh, this is something I really liked, and uh, I fought for this feature because when I was a young lawyer, we would keep uh, time on a day timer, so it looked like a calendar. So if you want to use that method, uh, and this helps you to spot gaps in your day, like oh, uh, what did I do between eight and nine? Well, let's see. I remember I was. Uh, um, talking to somebody. I was, I was uh, having a conversation with Matt. I should be able to bill him for that, shouldn't I? 
So I'm going to just uh, input a little time into a matter here. Again, I've got a snippet, so I can just uh, talk about investigate and study QBO. Call that an hour that because that's how much I blocked out there, and I can save that entry. So just like that, we're filling in the day. Now, a lot of lawyers like timers. So you can just start a timer here and it'll start keeping time. And when you're done, you can fill in what that was for or at any point in the process just to say, okay, what was that? That was a telephone. Conversation with client, fill in a client and matter. And when you turn this off, we can pause it or we can save it and say, oh, we're done. That was a quick one. And it loads up the time entry and you can save it. Um, so that uh, also, th that one doesn't appear on the calendar because it doesn't have the uh, spe spe specific times associated with it, but you can include that. So in any case, you've got all of those ways to keep time on your, on your browser. Then there is also a desktop tracker that you can use and a mobile app. So every way you wanna keep time, you've got it in Lean Law. So that's time entry. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of uh, normal for our industry, what we just showed you. Um, now we move to invoicing where we, and, and this is where you know, you, uh, a mid-sized firm has different needs than firms that than smaller firms because your you know invoicing page in this case your what's called the ready to bill page has a whole bunch of matters on it. You might be billing 500 or a thousand invoices every month, so you need really good bulk features for that, and that's what this allows you to do. And you need a workflow. So Lean Law accommodates a number of workflows. For example, uh, this is one where you have a tab called ready to bill. When this is where all the time and if you've inputted expenses, which is this tab, they go right here. Uh, that appears on this, this page. So it's ready to look to, to make it into a bill. Then you can make it into a uh, you know, if uh, a lot of firms want to have that review of the time and so on uh, before they go into a draft format. And this creates all of the invoice drafts. And we've got a whole different set here. And then uh, once you can then approve the drafts, and then make them into invoices, send them to QuickBooks and they get sent out. So let's just uh, walk through that process for a second with some time just to show people how that works. Um, so if I, let's just work on this one to make this easy. And over here it says one click, we can create a draft invoice. Or here, if we want to uh, review of the time entries, let's look at that. So it's like, okay, now we've got a little bit of billable time. Uh, if I wanted to um, edit this, I could do that. And uh, you know, if I needed to add more time or save, that happens there. And we go, okay, that looks good. I'm gonna prepare the invoice. And now we have a draft invoice to look at and we create we officially create it that way. And you can do that one by one, or you can do that um, with, uh, uh, with a bulk function like this and make and approve all of those drafts at once, which is how, you know, one of those time-saving actions. Now we can go uh, to the drafts and let's, uh, we can either go through another step of approval and just for the sake of time, 
let's say this is the one we want to work on. And we're going to say, okay, I've already looked at that. I know what it says. I can view it. I can print it. I can approve it. And I can approve and send it to QuickBooks. So now we have just created an invoice in QuickBooks using this. So now we're taking advantage of some of that power that QuickBooks has on the invoicing side and that integration with it, the accounting, because that's now... That invoice is now in your AR and, and all of that, uh, the things that QuickBooks does. So now I want to manage those invoices. And this is one that I just had uh, sent. So, okay, I've got an, invo an invoice sitting in QuickBooks uh, with $450 in time and $5,000 in trust. Um, Hmm, what do I want to do with that? Um, I don't need to have it paid uh, because I've got money in trust. So I'm going to mark that. And what I can do here is just pay from trust. And it knows the amount of the invoice and it's just, okay, let's pay it. So now that invoice has been paid. Um, the trust has been adjusted. It'll uh, this will adjust itself shortly, but uh, you know it fully automates that process. So let's try one that doesn't have trust and and show. Now we can show the payment side of this. So that's one way to pay an invoice is to pay it out of the balance in the trust account, which we've already created. Now let's take another one where we look at, at this invoice and, okay, we owe $8,700 on this. And uh, so I want to, I'm going to email that to the client. And so this is, since we have a trust set up, we're using Lean Law's tr uh, payment system. If you don't have trust, you can use QuickBooks payment system if you prefer. But this is what happens if you if it goes through Lean Law's system. So I've been talking quite a while here, Matt. Do you have any questions as I'm speaking? No, I just like I said, I, I really like the flexibility, the four different uh, time tracking methods. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head. As 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 any business gets bigger, but you know, especially law firms, uh, doing things in bulk is is critical. Um, and then, you know, the ability to bill out correctly, you know, uh, or get take payment correctly, let me say it more accurately, either from the funds uh, on hand in the trust or to request more funds. It, it sounds like, you know, uh, all the workflows have been covered, uh, which is really exciting because while you can do a few of these things in QuickBooks Online, um, like you mentioned, there are some industry specific or compliance specific workflows. Uh, especially like this one we're talking about now with payments, uh, where where it, it becomes um, a little bit more difficult, more steps. It doesn't send the funds to the right place on, on the chart of accounts, et cetera, on the operating account. So um, yeah, go ahead, can, continue, please. I'd love to see how, if we don't have trust funds for a client, how we, how we reach out and get those funds from them. Right, right. And I, I will say that one of the things that really, inspired us early on was we really liked the way QuickBooks would send somebody an email and there was a big button on it that just said, pay now. <laughs> it's like, yes, make it easy to pay the bill. And we've, we uh, have emulated that with our system. Um, what we found is, um, and this is a feature that's just coming out now, is that people want to be able to configure those emails on a client by client basis. They might want to add an, a, a note like, oh, well, we won your summary judgment motion, or, you know, this is what's happening in your case. Good to see you at the country club. And, and so uh, when you go to email an invoice, you now have a fully configurable uh, email here um, with a nice template that we provide. Um, and then it allows you to say, okay, is there a balance on this client uh, beyond the invoice? Let's add a full balance payment link. 
or an, a, a, a link to just pay the, the invoice amount. So we're trying to make these links really smart so it knows what to do with the accounting and in QuickBooks. So we now say, okay, uh, this looks good. I'm going to uh, go ahead and send this to the client. Yeah, and I, I think it really highlights those themes, Gary, of automation and efficiency. You know, mm -hmm. um, why, why send out two or three separate invoices when you can hit a button and pull it all together? Um, you know, or if you need to send out a very specific invoice, you know, I, I like how you've incorporated that right into the flow. That's right, right. And if you, you are comfortable, you know what all of your clients want to see in their emails. Or if you use the same template for everybody, you can just mark all of these like so and send a uh, send those emails out in bulk, in bulk. It'll still have the customizable fields, so it will will feel, you know, uh, uh, as if it were addressed specifically to that client, which it is. Um, but you can also do them one by one and add your own custom notes. And, you know, that's part of that alignment and building trust with the client that a lot of our clients like. Um, so... Uh, so that's how that works. Now let's see what that did. So let's see if I got a an email over here. Here we go. So here's the email that we just sent. Comes to the client uh, and it has uh, a pay button. There's only one invoice. So there's no need for a pay balance uh, link. It includes the invoice. So you can take a look at the invoice that way. Uh, it has leads. Uh, and let me explain leads. And I should have mentioned this in the timekeeping section, which is if you work with uh, insurance companies or large corporations, a lot of times they require that you submit your bill in leads format, which allows it to be computer analyzed for, you know, the appropriateness of the fees. Mm -hmm. So we automatically produce those leads text here. They're not much to see there. It just looks like a bunch of uh, a CSV file, essentially. Um, and if there were trust, there would also be a trust statement here to show all the activity in the client's trust account. So that's what the email looks like. Um, now let's see what happens when we go to pay it. And, and I would imagine, Gary, that heads off a lot of questions, right? By uh, having all those attachments, having if the, if the client has uh, questions, they can kind of self-serve, see what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that that's the whole idea. Transparency, uh, clarity, all of those things build trust in the client relationship. Um, so now we've the, your your client has just opened up the uh, the pay pay link and they get a, a link just like they're used to seeing on online systems. It know it's smart. It knows the amount that's due. Gives the client the option to pay a uh, lesser amount. You don't have to include that if you don't want. Mm -hmm. um, it, it says, oh, okay, we're going to pay by credit card or ACH. Or uh, I don't want to pay electronically. I'm going to send you a check. Um, then we can uh, send, tell them they can designate where they want the receipt to go. Uh, we can say this is, uh, I'm going to call this Judy. Uh, put in the amount here. We have a bunch of test accounts over here. We can copy in here. And just like that, it's paid. Um, okay, so the client now has paid and they, in just a moment, will receive a receipt. Well, in just a moment, they will. Um, so, uh, you know, the, what happens next is the receipt is sent to the client and a notification is sent back to the law firm that that invoice has been paid. 
Um, the other, and I'll come back to this to show you what those look like, but they look like standard receipts. Um, so one of the other features we have is, you know, really pushing for people to use email as much as possible to deliver invoices because of the efficiencies of that. Mm -hmm. You know, many law firms and still send most of their invoices out by on paper, which is very expensive to do when you count up all the staff time and everything that's included like that. So we really want to encourage people to do this by email. Uh, that does not have to require uh, uh, electronic payment. You can do it with or without in the lien law system. But then once those emails go out, we have a lot of demand for uh, people to say, hey, what happened with those invoices that that I sent? You know, so, oh, okay. Uh, so, so we have an email tracking system here. So for example, this invoice uh, for the floral company um, we show, okay, there was an invoice with the recipient. Oh, it's been opened uh, the other day. So at least we know that it was opened. Oh, this one was clicked. And somewhere, well, we don't have any that have been paid. So uh, I've got some work to do on this side. So I let's say we want to mark this one and say, oh, well, that one, I, then we need to send a reminder. And we just send a reminder. So, you know, the QuickBooks in, uh, payment system has a nice reminder system like this. And, you know, the, ours has many of those features and it will soon have automated reminders as well. So yeah, I, I really like this, Gary, because, um, you know, if you are going to pick up the phone and call, you know, if you've only sent it out once, probably makes sense to send a reminder. But then if they've opened it a couple of times, but still haven't paid it, then maybe, you know, at that point, you know, you could have some rules in place where, hey, maybe pick up the phone call if they've opened yeah. it twice. And then if they say, well, I haven't got it, you know, you can say, well, you know, OK, maybe we got the wrong email. It looks like someone someone got it. Maybe we're sending it to the wrong place, um, you know, uh, at the client's business and, and kind of uh, fix a clerical error or whatever the case may be. But Sounds like this really helps to stay on top of, of receiving payments. Exactly. Well, and it can help you understand, you know, if, if you are doing this on regular cadence, if somebody's not paying your bill because they're not happy, then mm -hmm. you get a, it's like, oh, well, better to know that sooner rather than later. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, 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 again, it's that process of building trust that we want to, uh, to address in here. Um, so that's that. Let's see what's come to our inbox. Okay, yes, now we've got everything uh, come, that has come into our inbox. So number one is Gravity Legal is uh, telling the law firm that there's a payment method's been stored. So that client now has a stored payment method, method for future payments. Sometimes you set up your billing so that you can draw automatically at a certain point after the uh, invoice has been sent um, and particularly draw from trust uh, account. So, you know, this is helpful to know. Okay, now that method is in place for that client. Now here's the law firm's receipt. And uh, very similar, here is the client's receipt for that payment. And then remember that reminder we sent to the floral company, they got something that looks like this. And this reminder is also configurable. So you can, you know, add a personal note or something if you want to do that. In this case, there is an invoice balance and a pay balance. Um, and let me, since we didn't show the trust activity report, here's what that looks like. So this now has a record of everything that's happened in the client's trust trust account. That's important for, again, alignment with the client, but also for bar compliance. Yeah, I really so, like debit credit view and, and what's going on with, with the accounting because that's something to, just to be transparent with it, that, that QuickBooks can't, can't make it that pretty. So we're super <laughs> excited when we were talking about this and, and, you know, appreciate you showing that because heads off those questions. And like you said, continues to build that trust. So. Exactly. Exactly. So that is kind of the, that core workflow, the timekeeping invoicing 
and uh, and uh, and payment.